this is Kristen L or just Kristen. Welcome to my channel. I talk about science fiction and fantasy books and the awards that go with Today I'm talking about my reading week this past week. It's my second May journal. Okay. So last week I had the greatest reading week ever. I finished a bunch of books and I loved a lot of them. And then this week, it was just a slower reading week for whatever reason. I only finished one book and it was a novella and it was okay. I just, I haven't been wild about any of the books that I was reading this week and I think that probably contributed to why I just don't feel like I read a whole lot even though I did a little bit of traveling this weekend so I had like a lot of opportunities to like really listen to my audiobooks and get a lot of reading done but oh well, not always, it doesn't always happen. <laughs> um, I think there's also this quality of, you know, when you read a really good book, which I read like two books that I really, really enjoyed and I finished last week and I think after finishing a book that I really love, I just don't need to read anything for a while. Like I'm just, I just feel satisfied and like I almost don't want to like muddy that feeling of like satisfaction that you get after finishing a really good book. But anyways, um, I'm planning in this video to talk about what I started reading, what I finished obviously. I'm also going to talk about the novelette that I read this past week and announce the novelette for next week. Um, and I'm going to briefly talk about AAPI Heritage Month. Maybe I'll do that right now just so that I don't forget. AAPI, I actually had to look up what this actually stood for. I knew it was like Asian something or other. I knew it was like basically Asian Heritage Month, but I did look it up and it is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So okay, yes, there are some readathons going on. Um, Books with Cindy, or just with Cindy at this point, announced her annual Asian readathon. I'll link that video below. I learned about it because of Shannon at That's So Po. I will also link her channel below. I thought about participating, but then I decided not to. I feel a little bit bad about that. I should. But, like, I just, I have all of these other books coming in from the library that I've been waiting on for, like, a few months. I am planning to read books by Asian authors this year, so I just, I just don't want to have to, like, I have to fit it into the month of May kind of feeling. I don't, mm, you know, sometimes it's nice to have rigid rules, and sometimes it's not, and I'm just feeling right now, like, I just want a little more freedom, and I'll make sure that, you know, and I will be accountable. You know I have my graphs in my journals at the end of every month, or my wrap-ups, whatever. So I'll make sure after a few months if I don't have some Asian authors, but I already do. I, maybe I'll make a video just talking about some of my favorite Asian reads, Asian author reads from the recent future. The recent future. <laughs> the recent past. Okay. Whew. Anyways, um, one way that I did decide to participate, though, is to buy a couple books by Asian authors. So I almost never go shopping for physical books. I almost exclusively use my local library or occasionally purchase an ebook, but I got fully vaccinated this weekend woo, and decided to celebrate by actually stepping into a physical Barnes and Noble and just looking at all the books. And that was really fun. And it was really interesting because like I haven't actually gone into a public space with physical books and just a really, really long time at this point. So it was really cool to like just look at all of the books and actually visually see how large they are in comparison to each other. Like that was the, one of the main things that stuck out to me was like, wow, some of these books are massive. And I had like not really conceptualized how massive they are. Or like, ah, oh, some of these other books are like smaller than I had thought. And like, okay, whatever. That was really cool. Another thing I noticed was I feel like in my reading, and maybe this is my bubble, but I feel like women authors are just dominating the genre right now of science fiction and fantasy. I feel like if you were to ask me for a bunch of my favorite books, most of them would be female authors. Um, and I feel like that's not, I do tend to probably be more interested in female authors, and I do make a point of making sure that I'm reading female authors, but I'm not avoiding men. I'm not trying to not read men. So I do feel like there is an organic quality to the fact that like I just perceive women to be dominating in this, you know, they're the best authors right now. I am, of course. 
So I was kind of surprised when I, I looked at the shelves in Barnes and Noble and like those shelves are still dominated by men. Like the sci-fi section, the fantasy section, they're still like mostly male authors. So I'm just like sad and confused and I don't know, I'm a little curious. Like, you know, is this just my bubble or, you know, is that just the industry still thinking that people prefer male authors? I don't know. I don't know. So I was a little sad about that. Also, the sci-fi aisle was like one side was sci-fi and the other side was manga. And holy, manga is really popular. Like the whole time I was there, there was like only me looking at sci-fi and like 20 teenagers like running around really excitedly looking at the manga. <laughs> um, so that's cool. I was, I was happy for them. A little annoyed for me though, because I just wanted to look at my books in peace. But anyways, it's okay. Um, so the books I ended up picking out are um, The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, which I had started as an audiobook from the library and I didn't get to finish it before it was returned. So I decided to just get this one because I still want to finish reading it. And it comes with some supplemental material. Like in the back there is, um, she has some discussion questions and some, okay, so about the author, a note from the author, about the book, there's reading group discussion questions, and she has a whole section where she um, shares some resources if you're interested in learning more about The Rape of Nanking, which this book is based on, I guess. So I thought that seemed like a good investment because I still need to read it, and it looks pretty, and supplemental resources that maybe I wouldn't get if I was borrowing this from the library. So yay, as an ebook that is. And I also got, Exhalation by Ted Chang, which I have just heard so many rave reviews about this book. I've been really wanting to read it, so now I can. And I mean, there's some novelettes in here that got nominated for awards the year that this came out. I think this whole collection got nominated for some awards, so it it's supposed to be really amazing. I'm really I have high expectations for this book. So last week I finished reading Ariadne, which I loved. It was so good. I finished reading. The Midnight Bargain, which I love, was really good. I'm still, by the way, hoping to come out with a review for The Midnight Bargain, but I need to kind of put my thoughts together for that first. I then immediately started The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornichek, and it was really interesting to pick this up right after reading Ariadne, because Ariadne is Greek mythology, and I had no idea. I actually had no idea what The Witch's Heart was about, but then I started reading it, and it's about Norse mythology, so I guess this is just my mythological May. Um, I'm okay with that. This is really fun. So I was excited, like, ooh, I'm gonna get like a different flavor of like kind of the same thing and I can compare and contrast. And sadly, The Witch's Heart is just nowhere near the level that Ariadne was for me. I, Ariadne, I just loved it. It hit that sweet spot of just whatever it is, that ineffable essence of a book I love that Ariadne had. This book just doesn't quite have it. And it's not bad, but it is slow. So it's following, um, the main character is Angraboda. She is a witch. She has kind of a mysterious past that she doesn't fully remember. And a lot of this book, at least so far, I think I'm maybe almost halfway. I need to check where I'm at. I'm not actually totally sure, but I'm probably around the halfway mark. It, a lot of it is very domestic. Like it's her, living in her cave. We're learning how she's living in her cave. We're learning about her daily activities. There is a friendship with another woman that I really love. I really love any time I see a female friendship portrayed, especially in a good way. Um, you know, for passing the Be Bechdel test, like, woo, yay, the low bar has been hit. Um, Loki is also a kind of, I guess, more of a side character that's an important side character, main character, side main character. Mm. I don't know. He's in there too. And I don't want to give anything away, but just like the story moves along very slowly and just a lot of just like really domestic stuff happens. And it's got a fantastical mythological elements to it, but I don't know. It's also feeling a little bit, a little bit angsty at the point that I'm at right now. And I'm just... I'm not caring a lot, so I'm not like really excited to listen to it. So that's that. Um, 
I also started Hummingbird Salamander by Jeff Vandermeer. This is a book that came out very recently and I was interested to read it because I had enjoyed Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. I read that a few years ago, maybe three years ago at this point, two, two or three years ago, I don't know. Um, I enjoy his writing style. I think that it's really readable and interesting. And so I was, I was eager to read more by him. And so I started this and it's also just okay at this point. I am gonna continue reading it. I didn't get very far, I just read a little bit. But um, I'm not feeling like super hooked either with this one. So I also just barely started The Echo Wave by Sarah Gailey. And um, this, I was actually, I was liking this one probably the best of the three, but I like, it just came from the library and I was really feeling like, okay, I need to put this on hold until I finish these other two because they're going back to the library sooner. So I'm looking forward to finishing that, but I'm gonna try to finish the Witch's Heart and Hummingbird's Elementor first. I did finish Princess Florlinda and the Forty Flight Tower by Tamsin Muir. Tamsin Muir is the same person that wrote Gideon the Ninth and Harrow the Ninth. I love those books and I listened to the audio versions of them and they were narrated by Maura Cork who also narrates Florlinda. So that was that was really fun and it was it was good. I would say there was a four star read for me it was enjoyable, it was cute, it was funny, it wasn't mind-blowing, but it was good, you know, it was fine. I All right, so let's talk about the novelette that I read this week. I have been doing a novelette challenge where I am reading through every novelette that's been nominated for a Hugo or Nebula Award this year. I've been starting with the Hugo nomination. So far I've read um, The Inaccessibility of Heaven by Elliot de Bodard and Helicopter Story by Isabel Fall. So this past week was Helicopter Story by Isabel Fall and I talked about in my last journal the um, kind of the controversy around the story. It was actually taken down. It was originally published in Clark's World Magazine, but Isabel Fall, the author, actually asked for it to be taken down. A lot of, the, a lot of people in the trans community felt that it was very harmful and offensive and I didn't know a lot why. I read an article about it I will share that it down here again in the description, of course. Um, I shared it last week also. But basically, uh, they, the trans community was divided. Some of them felt like it was a really validating story that really, I don't know, that they related to. And then other people felt like it was really harmful and offensive in the same community. So I was really excited to see what this story was actually going to be like. And I read it. And I feel like it was relatable. Like it's a discussion of gender and what is gender and what is the experience of gender and, and stuff like that. And I identify, I mean, I think I'm, I'm mostly a cis woman. Like I'm a, I was born female and I've never really had a problem with that except when people I've had some people in my life, really awful people in my life who have told me that I am not feminine enough or that I'm not meeting the requirements for their idea of a woman. And I think my reaction to that has always been, well, you're wrong. I am a woman and a woman is bigger than your definition of woman. And so I guess I've, I do consider myself a cis woman because I don't feel like I'm not a woman. I feel like other people are wrong about what it means to be a woman, but I'm a woman. Um, however, I've done like a little bit of personal exploration and there's like, there are so many gender descriptors out there. I, I feel like the one that I probably identify with the most personally is gray gender, where you kind of don't really feel like you have a gender, but you don't really care a lot either way, which I feel like really sums up how I feel. I, I don't feel a strong sense of gender. I just... I'm just me and I just don't want to have to worry about being male or female or portraying that and I mean obviously I do portray femininity um, and I feel like that's something that I've kind of had to work to learn to do better and I mean I think that's probably a pretty typical experience for most women is that you know you have to learn how to do your hair and your makeup and you have to learn how to pick out attractive outfits and blah de blah de blah um, but I feel like in some ways I've had to 
maybe do it more. And it's hard to tell because, you know, of course I'm stuck inside my own experience. I don't, I don't really know. I don't know. So I appreciated the story kind of exploring, you know, gender. It is a construct, but, you know, what does that mean past that? You know, doesn't that just mean that we can construct our gender? And I don't know. I thought that it was creative and well done. It wasn't like the most riveting story ever. I don't know how I'm going to rank this in terms of the other novelettes because I thought what it did was cool, but not, it wasn't like amazing, you know, <laughs> it wasn't mind blowingly good. So I'm really unsure. And I don't know, I was talking to some friends on Goodreads and saying like, I really don't get what was offensive about this. And some of them were saying that they thought it was just a knee-jerk reaction, like, oh, this must be offensive because it sounds like it's probably going to be offensive. Um, but I think, like, some of the people that were offended had actually read it, and somebody else said that it was all going back to this really, really vile comment that somebody had made where they were indeed um, saying, like, comparing trans people, like, calling themselves trans people saying like you might as well be calling yourselves a trans helicopter or wh whatever and Ted this whole thing and so he explained that you no know, actually Isabel was trying to reclaim that I guess it's not even a term like imagery in a positive way but I think a lot of people they weren't ready to <laughs> reclaim that in a positive way it was still just hurtful and harmful so I respect that um I'm I you know, luckily I'm not a Hugo voter this year, so it does make me wonder, like, as a voter, what are some things that, like, maybe, if you're a voter, what are you thinking about? Like, are you are you wanting to support Isabel and the effort that she made, or are you wanting to support people that are not ready to reclaim this imagery in a positive way? And, you know, maybe there's going to be another novel that is just, like, head and shoulders, just way better, and we won't even have to worry about it. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts, whether you're a Hugo voter or not. What do you think? And if you read this novelette, share with me your ideas about it, how it impacted you or didn't impact you. Um, and moving forward next week, I'm going to be reading Two Truths and a Lie by Sarah Pinsker, which I will link below. You can read it for free online at tour.com. So please join me in reading it. I'll talk about it next week in my um, number three major. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.